Hello everyone. Oh, late bad. It's like, who's running this place? I ask you. <laughs> Hello everyone. It is 7.09 on a Thursday night and you know what that means. That means we're going to have some Stampin' Zoo time. So hello everyone. This is Lisa Harden. I'm coming to you live from the Stampin' Zoo. I don't have everything quite in order yet. Not surprising. I needed a little nap. All's well, but I needed a nap. You know, it just, it just helps me be a little bit more me on Thursday night. So hello, and thank you for joining me. Let me get things moved around just a tiny bit. I'm fresh out of the shower though. Um, not that that matters to you, but I am. Makes me feel great. You were getting worried, Jean. Jean, come on. <laughs> You know I'm 705 usually at best. <laughs> I have no idea what the back of my hair looks like. I'm assuming it's perfect. Oh, maybe not perfect right here. I'll try to keep that side away from you. <laughs> Just kidding. I need a little sip of refreshing fresca. <laughs> you can dock my pay, Kathy Sheely. I'm a little late. I know, sorry. Um time gets away from me. Let me, I am, I hate it when people diddle around on their phones when they're talking to me. However, I need to get this set up for you. <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight? We are post 4th of July extravaganza. And, um, you know, this girl's doing okay. I hope you are doing well. And, um, we're going to have some fun tonight because you know I had this planned for a whole week so um, wow it should be really like fantastic either that or eh, I've probably slightly forgotten what I was doing but thank goodness I had examples ready and all that business so um, we're gonna be good let's see whoops how does that look my new phone's so heavy so I have to have a counterweight for it or the view wouldn't be that good Okay, I think that's going to work. Let me bring that over here. Look at that. You get to see how the sausage is made, don't you? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to see you guys. Let me take a look behind me. It doesn't look too bad. I'm in the middle of super fun time. Christmas in July, swaps, you name it, I've got it going on. And um, I'm having a huge, well, I think it's going to be huge, um, 11 stampers next weekend for a Christmas in July a catalog kickoff party celebration party BOGO sale yes I'm wrapping all of it into one can you believe it <laughs> they're gonna get the deal of a century and so I'm really happy about that so after that in-person BOGO I am happy to tell you if there's anything left I think there will be stuff left I haven't had a BOGO for a couple of years, but, and you guys know how much I purchased, so there's a fair amount of product here. I'll just say that. However, so after the 16th, then I will start to place those things online for a BOGO sale as well. Um, if you are interested in that, private message me. I will be putting some marketing together for it, but. Hey, if you um, already know that you're interested in that and you'd like to shop it, I am going to put it into a private Facebook group just so I can kind of corral, corral the responses and things. So um, anyway, just let me know if you're interested in that by private messaging me and I will add you to a list, a VIP list. And then um, shortly, like I said, I'm not sure when it's gonna go live, but it will be after July 16th and before December 16th. <laughs> no, it'll be shortly after July 16th. And um, then you guys can shop and enjoy the same great deal, which will be um, ordering great product, right? And at the same time, earning celebration rewards and BOGO product. So I hope you're gonna look forward to that. My body needs some lotion. I don't recommend it pre-paper crafting, but trust me, it'll soak in. Oh my goodness, Kathy Strang has shared already. I bet Jean has too. You know, I love it when you share, I share. 
And in fact, we are gonna have a drawing today, but I think it's gonna have to be after the video because I forgot to get the names <laughs> from two weeks ago. And guess what I have to share though? I have another Hippest Hippos. Oh my gosh. So if you haven't already added this to your order, um, free with this $50 celebration purchase, right? If you haven't already added that, um, you have a chance to win one tonight. Simply if you shared the video from two weeks ago, which I guess you can hop over there and share it right now. But um, if, you, if you shared that, then I'm gonna put you into a drawing, of course, as usual. But like I said, I will have to do that um, after I close out the live because I didn't gather the names. Always trying to finish 20 minutes of work in a 10 minute, in the last 10 minutes before I go live here. <laughs> it's like the end of my day, which I love it. I look forward to it all Thursday, but you know, I'm, up, I'm getting up there in age. So anyway, friends, uh, let's see, everyone is sharing. Thank you. And KZ already has the hippos and the dyes. She was on that. Um, so did everybody have a good 4th of July? Nobody blew their finger off. Nobody's pets are missing. Of course we know Adina's dog has been found, which is very good in the Stampin' Up! community. I'm sure you were all following that. I was as well. And so happy to read that she was found. And I certainly hope that none of that um, happened to you or your fur kids. I, Tango, you would think it would be Tango that was like all messed up about fireworks. <laughs> he was dead asleep with his Mr. Bell. Cash, on the other hand, not so great. He's a little worried about it. Not, t not horrible. Um... I know you know this, most of you know this, but my last dog was a Doberman and he was insanely scared of fireworks and would try to get on my head, <laughs> but wasn't happy. Even if he would have sat up there on my head at 72 pounds, I guess it would have been okay, but he was, he just wanted to get on me and keep moving. <laughs> so God, every 4th of July, I, um, you know, I miss him terribly, but not on the 4th of July, poor little guy. So, uh, no fireworks here, but you know, all the other trappings of the 4th of July weekend, I had a great work weekend, which in the yard, which, um, as you know, I haven't been feeling well for off and on five years. And, uh, I can pretty much tell you that I'm pretty, well, I don't know for sure. Um, but all signs are pointing to, uh, the fact that my Crohn's is probably going into remission. Something's happening. So uh, I am feeling, I don't know, how many times better? A hundred times better? Probably than I was and have been. So a lot of things around here haven't been done for four or five years. And um, so I'm getting it back in shape the way I like it. You know, you can pay people to take care of things, but they never really take care of it like you want it taken care of. So anyway, had a beautiful weekend just working and planting flowers and putting in drip line and all sorts of super exciting stuff like that. And then I worked my body literally into non-movement. <laughs> in fact, a friend um, and her husband, they called and invited me over for a steak dinner on Monday night. Yeah. And I was like, I can't. I cannot move. Now, you know, like seriously, I couldn't go to a steak dinner. But um, that's how tired I was. I feel like it's a good thing. I feel like it's, um, it's just one more step closer to getting a little bit stronger. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I'm not, Roz, I'm not getting cocky. Because um, I thought I could outlive Crohn's in the beginning. And then I got news for you. <laughs> Crohn's said, hold my fresca. But you know what? Maybe the medicine's working finally. So anyway, I just had fun seeing friends. I went to my nephew Atlas's third birthday. He was a pirate. Some of you may have seen that. He is in a very animated stage of life, right? Three, three years old. Is very advanced physically. <laughs> and pretty good verbally too. I don't know where he's where he is on the on the scale of things, but anyway. 
very nice to see family and stuff. So that's really kind of it for me, friends. Uh, just feeling good. And, and uh, after five years of struggle, everyday things are feeling really good. Just sitting outside and having a coffee. It feels kind of like Christmas. <laughs> so one of my little adventures was I went to Trader Joe's and you're gonna die when you see what I found like a look at it is it perfect <laughs> it's a camper we are using the camper die tonight I think some of you call it a caravan Leslie what do you call this you might call it a caravan oh Leslie says fireworks are banned in Australia the whole country it makes sense after what happened a few years ago really I get it and what is my stance on fireworks I am fine with little kid fireworks and I am fine with professional fireworks I hate everything in between <laughs> okay the M80 business and whatever else I don't even know what they're called but anyway I'll stop now is this not so cute Pat it's adorable I had to have it I didn't even make it into the door of Trader Joe's before I saw this so um, it was a sign because we are working tonight with the trees for sale stamp set and the um, oh gosh what are they called tree lot dies so that's my little cute little desk ornament I don't have plants in the house I feel like I'm making a slight turn on that I used to have a hard roll because it seems like they always get gnats in the soil it but then I found this fern and I got that and then it just went from there <laughs> so now I have some succulents at the office I'm turning into you know that person I'm gonna have a philodendron climbing up the wall pretty soon <laughs> so let's have a little show and tell first we have so much to get through tonight I hope you guys are rested as I am hands are flying right so I have so many cute things um, you guys are just nice professional fireworks allowed only see that's where I am. Go see the pros. They're so much better than anything you can do at home anyway, but I, I'm a woman. I don't get it. It's not my thing. Fire and explosions are not my thing. I'm a crafter, right? Okay, look at this. This is so cute. It makes me laugh. Jill Peterson sent this to me. Okay, look at it. It's so cute. I'll show you when I put the camera down, but it's a tiny llama. And then, okay, and then it comes apart, okay? And then there's the world's smallest sticker book in here. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, Kathy, you have plants everywhere. Okay, I'll have to talk to you about how to keep the bugs out of them. I'm not into that. I don't even know if, I'll show this to you when I point the camera down, but it's just adorable. It's just like this miniature like I couldn't ever even get the stickers off of that they're so cute and then she made this beautiful wow she made this beautiful note card for me it has like embossing on it and everything and then another sheet of llama stickers I've got so many llama stickers now I feel like yeah I gotta start using those things but then I kind of don't want to I just want to admire them but they're not as much fun Hello, Amy. How are you doing, Amy? You have the tree lot dies. I know that because you mentioned that the other day. And then check this out. This is from a recently retired stamp set, but we still have the dies and they are called Amazing Thanks. And this was an amazing card from an amazing person with a good quality heart. Her name is Carla Kimball. She is a very good friend of mine. And um, I met her through my excellent friend Anne and um, what can I say about her she's just gorgeous inside and out and she sent me a really nice card just saying thank you for the help and the Facebook lives and she hoped I was feeling better yeah a couple of weeks ago oh I basically had stomach flu I don't know if it was Crohn's or whatever but it knocked me down big time so you know and that, that song I will not sing it for you but I am um, the th my theme song is I get knocked down but I get up again you never gonna keep me down that's my theme song oh this is so cool this is just a mix of really beautiful paper it almost looks like it has a quilting 
um, look to it and feel. This is from Roz. Roz, you're on here. Made it. Isn't it cool? The brushed brass butterflies, the hues of happiness paper, and see how she's kind of done the four, um, well, they're not rectangles. There's two rectangles and two squares, and they all come together, and then you fold the edges over for a diamond in the middle. Wow. Looks like a, that looks like a geometry problem, doesn't it? It's beautifully stamped inside, no naked insides, and of course, a really nice note. Yes. Roz is someone I would have never met. Would it have not been for Stampin' Up? So it's so nice to have so many of you uh, in my life because of that. These are adorable. This is from Sherry Poppin. And it is a box of cards, believe it or not. There's 12 of them. But when you see them, you know. When you know, you know. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> They're so cute. I love his, he's kind of got a Justin Bieber swoop hair. Look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I am coordinating a swap and um, these are these are all things that came in in the swap, minus the Carla cards. Um, the Carla card was just because she was being kind. But these are all things that came in the swap box. I was like, no, you're not supposed to give me things, but okay. Um, okay, now this is from Kathy Sheely. It's really cool. It also came with her swaps. Oh, I love it. I had to look at it again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take post it out. So this is probably, I don't know if it has the vintage bottles, but it's the bottle, the bottle or bottles of happiness. I don't remember what it is, but I love this beautiful collage. This would be like a collection. If I had the skill of collecting items and putting them on on display this is what I hope they would look like and then look inside she's even said have a beautiful day and had that all decorated so really stunning great inspiration as always I keep them in my gift box one of those boxes back there is full of cards from all of you so it's really fun um I'm 100 years old I'm gonna get them out and repurpose them <laughs> but not until I'm a hundred until then I'm just gonna enjoy them I take them out some time and look at them <laughs> I do it's true okay so let me clear the decks of this I don't want this stuff to get crunched or hurt in any way oh my gosh so in color club went in the mail or no is going in the mail tomorrow morning so if you're involved in that just know that that is on its way and um, the card class is scheduled. So we're all good over there. We're good on, well, we're not getting the Christmas party. I got a lot of work to do, but we're gonna have a beautiful Christmas party. And um, my gosh, I have so many things. There's just like an explosion of things happening. When did July get to be like so exciting? First of all, friends, if you are going to shop with me, Will you please use this host code for orders that are under $150? I so appreciate it. What I do with that is I group smaller orders together and I end up um, purchasing things and giving them away. So it just helps the Stamping Zoo be, um, what do I want to say? Have giveaways, really. That's what I end up doing. Or a little extras for classes and things like that. So the stuff comes back to you. So, um, please take a look at that. It's just a little code and, um, you just add it, you just apply it to your orders and, um, then away you go. It's super easy. Now I'm going to bring a couple of other things up on the screen. I'm going to show you, we have a new kit that is so adorable. Let me take that banner off for a minute, but you have to promise you'll use it. So we have a new kit. Don't ask me the name of it right this minute, but. Um, it's about getting better, feeling better, shoot, a little relaxation. I don't remember now, but anyway, that is the stamp set. And then these are just a snapshot of the supplies. So you can make nine cards, three each of three designs. I believe the kit's 23 or $25, not a lot. And it's all inclusive. It has a stamping block. 
and all of that business with it. Um, it's got some die cut elements as well as you can stamp the own, stamp your own stump, skunk. I can't speak. Stamp your own skunk. But you also get that chicken with the heating pad on its head. And the mouse, something's wrong with the mouse too. So these are feel better cards, right? So this is one of the brand new kits. Just came out yesterday, I believe. And then we have another kit that I'm really thinking that I need to have. I think it's called Notes of Kindness. Again, I didn't worry about the names apparently. But this is the stamp set for this next kit. It is a trio of notepads. Uh, well, like notebooks that you could easily make into little journals or um, vacation memento kits. I think that would be really fun. I see this being, uh, let me show you the supplies for it. I see this really attracting teenagers, but um, tweens too, maybe eight, maybe eight to 80. How about that? Because I like, I like it a lot. I like all these sentiments and just the smiley face and stuff, but then look at these. So you get like all these, this notebook and then all of these really happy papers. Yeah, I know it's beautiful and it looks like silver washi and then you get some tear and tape. So again, just a really nice kit and it has a stamp set. So it obviously has an ink and a block with it. So lots of fun stuff there. And then finally, please don't forget our standby, but, um, and stand out the monthly paper pumpkin kit. It is a subscription. However, um, it's very easy to pause or cancel it. But you don't want to cancel it this coming month because it's going to have a nautical theme. Sending good thoughts is the theme. And um, also, it's a kit for cards. You know, the kits can be all sorts of different things. But this month will be cards. And I wanted to remind you of something that they've been doing that's really kind of new. We have so many cool aspects of Paper Pumpkin. And one of the new things they're doing, and they've been doing it for several months, but I finally just kind of caught on is they are adding, they're, they're not adding, but there's a playlist available every month for Paper Pumpkin for songs. And so they curate this list of songs. And then um, for every Paper Pumpkin, they have this little like grouping of songs playlist that you can listen to when you're making your Paper Pumpkin. So, um, anyway, it's really cool. I like it. I'm going to start playing it at my stamp camps. So, um, I looked at a few of them and, and they definitely, I think they try to fit the theme and the vibe of, of the themes every month that are going on there. So I thought that was just really a great idea. I mean, like I said, um, whoever's in charge of paper pumpkin is like kind of a genius, I think. A Stampin' Up! Genius, okay? All right, friends, I'm going to put you down on the desk so we can get down to business, right? Oh, goodness, where have I put the tree lot dies? Those can't be missing in action. There they are. Okay, so let's talk about the products we're going to use tonight, at least some of the products. He can stand, he can stand over there by the trailer. Oh, look at him. Look at his hair. You guys, his hair looks just like that hair of the llama on the card. Hilarious. Okay, so he's going to stand over there by the camper. Um, so this is trees for sale, and they are for sale. This is a standalone stamp set. Hello, Megan, and uh, nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, Andrea. Andrea loves Paper Pumpkin. Yes, and there are videos on almost all of the kits. I post lots of the product videos here, as you know, on Stamping Zoo. Um, so I hope you're perusing the Stamping Zoo daily because I try to post things daily. This is the Stamping, or this is the Stamping Zoo. This is the stamp set. Trees for sale, super cute, had me at the dog, right? And the dog, the paw prints, <laughs> but it's more about the trees. I guess the dog is kind of an accent. So it makes a beautiful little 
um, tree lot. And here's a string of lights and um, the pole to hung, hold up the lights. We're gonna play with all of this tonight. I don't know that I used every single stamp, but I used a lot. And so, um, anyway, this is great. You can see there's some two-step stamping here with three different sizes of trees. There's some ornaments. There's a tree stand. And then, of course, you have to have some snowflake or some twinkle, whatever you want to call it. Then finally, the dog. And then these three really cool greetings. Um, we don't have a font like that right now. This looks like handwritten, I think, but I don't know. My handwriting doesn't look like that. Anyway. It's very cool, and you can see they've given us some great examples over here, and there's also a whimsical woodland 3D embossing folder. I missed that. How is that possible? Um, missed it in my last order. That's okay, because there's gonna be another one tomorrow morning. That's right, I'm getting the list ready. It's just about as long as my grocery list. <laughs> so, Anyway, this is what the embossing folder looks like when you ink it up, which I think is great. And of course, makes a great background for this um, stamp set. But then when you want to like, take it up a notch, kick it up a notch, right? As Emerald says, you can go to your celebration flyer. Now these are all products that you earn. You can now purchase them. You must earn them on purchases of 50 and $100. They are cumulative. So you can earn everything in this uh, flyer. You can earn more than one for every $50 purchase. You can choose something or you can accumulate to $100 and choose something. So if it says free with a $50 purchase, that means the dies are free with a $50 purchase, this huge set of dies. There's 19 dies that go with the hippo set. Okay. So it's going to cut out the hippos. Plus it's going to do all sorts of fun stuff. You can make a boat. They can go snorkeling under the umbrella. Okay. So then, uh, we have talked about a couple of these, but where I want to show you where the tree lot dies are. So the tree lot dies are free with a $100 purchase. There are, this needs a new label, but there's 24 dies. Look at that. So all of those trees I showed you in the stamp set, those can be cut out. You can make your own textural two, two layer stamps or two layer trees, right? We're gonna do some of that tonight. There's even a Charlie Brown tree. Look at that. So cute, a wreath. This cuts out the trees for sale stamp sign. Remember I showed you there was a pole and some lights and then here's the cutest camper along with some extra pieces I'm going to show you how those work okay what is this does anybody know what this is I'm going to show you what this is and um, of course there's some pennants just too many cute things okay so I'm going to show you how all of these work together to make a really outstanding scene look at this we're going to make a card that's kind of like this. I took some pieces and parts from that. Oh, what celebration item is my favorite? Well, Andrea, my favorite is the one I'm working with. I, I can't help it. Every time I get something new, I love it. But I really, really have fun working with these dies. And, um, but I don't know. What's your favorite, Andrea? Now, I don't, let's see. I don't know. I really think it's probably the tree lot dies. Everything's great though. I have almost everything except I didn't get this yet, but I think it's great. I think it's actually really quite beautiful. Um, yeah, everybody's liking these dies. Nice. This is like really cool. I think it's going to be the most useful one probably. And, um, remember we still have to make that card that says, oops, so sorry you are together right? I didn't get that made yet, but you can, you can make, there's a sentiment for everything in Stampin' Up! World. And so I've got to get that done, but don't miss things. This is hard to miss, or this is easy to miss because it's white, but it's beautiful silver and gold paper that you can then, you can use it just plain like they've done here, or you can run your blending brushes over it 
and the silver and gold foiling will resist the color, but then the ink will stick to the paper. So just really have so much fun with it. And remember, um, if you need this flyer or this mini catalog and you are in the United States and don't work with uh, another demonstrator, I would love to send these to you, complimentary, okay? So please keep that in mind. Well, hello, Maria. You love the single iris. Oh, that's so nice. That's beautiful. Yes, that, um, sorry, I'll get this out just for one quick notification. Again, you'll just have to watch for um, notification of this, but in September, I'm gonna be doing a class and there will be an option to purchase these things after they retire, right? So there'll be an option to purchase them in September from me. As many as I have, I don't know, I'm gonna accumulate them. However, if you add this to your order from me, anytime in July or August, you will receive the online class for free. So please keep that in mind. Um, you know, I keep track of your orders. So everybody that's putting this on their order right now and next month will get the online version of the class for free, okay? So please keep that in mind. I think it's really, uh, it's a stunner, but the paper and everything. So um, I'm gonna show you the cards we're gonna make real quick here, and then we'll go back and make them. I thought sometimes it's fun to surprise you and sometimes it's just fun to show you. Okay, so here's the first one is this cute little camper on a hill, right? And so I took the idea from the celebration flyer and we are going to make this background, this starry sky. Okay, so that is the first one. And then this is kind of, you know, um, I don't know what you would call this style, but I just kept adding things to it. That's the style. <laughs> and of course, it's pink. I love a pink Christmas card. I can't help myself. I don't know why, but I do. And then finally, here is just the tree lot in its splendor. Just look at that little um, string of lights. Can you believe that the dye cuts those out? <laughs> hey, thanks for the hearts. I love it. Hello, Brenda. Brenda is stateside after a beautiful trip to La France. Oh, I'm just a little bit jealous. So um, anyway, this is just those dyes. Remember I showed you that you could cut out different layers for your trees. And then of course, look at all the little pieces. And do you remember the dye I asked you about? This tiny dye, where is it? This thing is actually curtains for your glamper. Look at it, it's adorable. It even has embossing. <laughs> it's like, what, who does this? I don't know. Stamp geniuses. I swear to goodness. So we're going to make these. We're going to try and make all these. But um, is there anyone that you want to start with first? Pink, green, or blue? Do you guys have like, and do you have a, you know, like most wanted card that you want to start with? You can tell me in the comments. Pink, green, or blue? Hello, Mary Ellen. So nice to see you. Oh, she's on vacation with her daughter, as you should be. I love that. <laughs> Aw, you guys, it's so fun. I'm just seeing like the string of hearts. I love it so much. It's like, it's like we're chatting. Of course, I love the hearts, but I love that we're, we're, we're dialoguing, right? Yes. Okay, green. I've got a green and a pink and a so cute. And a green. Now two blues. First one to get to five. If I can count these. Green's got one, two, three. Blue has two. Pink has one. We get five comments for one color and that'll be our, oh, pink, two pinks. Two blues, three greens. They're coming in, everybody. Okay, I'm going to move uh, the mic around a little bit there. There's a blue. Okay, I think we have three blues, three greens. Oh, goodness. They're coming in. The camper's so cute. It is cute. Don't you want to stay there? <laughs> 
we had a camper that looked like that. Not those colors, but this is the shape. Uh oh. Okay. Andrea or Andrea says green. And one more for green or I think one more for one, two, three. Nope, green only needs one more. The other one. Sorbet, Susan. <laughs> That's not an option. <laughs> Just pink, green, or blue. Da, 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 da. I'm going to go with green. Yeah, we're going to go with green. That's good enough. Okay, super cute. And it's a good one to warm up with, right? So this is a photopolymer set. What's in here? Oh yeah, I die cut some of the pieces. Look at me. Look how organized I am. I mean, seriously, like who was in here last week? <laughs> who took over my craft room last week? That's what I want to know. I made all these pieces and parts. It was in an effort because I really wanted to share all three cards with you, but you know, that's a lot. I don't expect you to stay here until 10 p.m. 10 p.m. my time. So we're going to kind of keep these off to the side. Some of these are small. Keep that in mind. Like this is the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Look at this. Basically looks like this. Oh my gosh. It's so adorable. <laughs> so anyway, don't lose these pieces. And some of them are on adhesive sheets. So Okay, so we're going to make this, and I have used in the background, you could make your own background, right? But there's this beautiful set of Boca DSP papers in the lights aglow. And um, I didn't bring all of them over here now, but just know that they are in the DSP called Lights Aglow. <laughs> oh, come on, Andrea. Come on. No, I get you. If I had daycare kids counting on me, Lord, I don't know. We wouldn't do so well is what I'm thinking. <laughs> so this is going to be our background, a piece of evening evergreen. And then um, we're going to stamp directly on this. We are going to do some die cutting, but I've done some of the die cutting. Okay, I cut. I didn't bother stamping them. I just cut two of the poles from um, Early Espresso, okay? And then we might have the trees. Let me make sure I don't, because we need the trees for both of them. And you kind of, I, I'm just gonna kind of split them up in two different ways. So one's gonna get one of one color and one of another color. See how this works? So you'll have a solid die cut and you'll have another one in the same size that you layer right on top. Okay, look at that. And I have cut these out of garden green, believe it or not, this is not my favorite color. Garden green has the distinguished title of my least favorite color. <laughs> Can you believe it? I have a least favorite color and it's garden green. But when it comes in handy, it comes in handy. So I give it, you know, I give it props for that. And so we have all these different, let's see, is that the right one? No. We have all these different pieces and parts that fit. I might have one missing, but that's okay. So let's see here. I think I want to do over here. Let's do... Um, this soft succulent and this I don't know what color that is I think it's shaded spruce okay and then let's do this one because it's, it's kind of its mate and then um, it might be short one I can't even believe that's possible I know poor garden green out of 50 colors, it comes in dead dog last. I'm not kidding. It's not my thing. It's just not. Okay, I remember now. These colors, these trees are in two different colors for a reason. Uh, we are missing that one. Where are you, my friend? I can always make another one. I mean, we don't, 
we don't have to cut very much. So, see, I even have our trees for sale. I have the stars. I mean, brother, it's like, it's like I had a helper last week or something. It's crazy, it's crazy talk, I tell ya. Okay, um, let me get one more star. And, oh, let's do some, let's do our um, stamping anyway. So we are gonna stamp the inside, So Very Merry. And um, we are gonna stamp our lights. And I definitely wanted to stamp the lights with you for a reason. And so this is the photopolymer string of lights. I'm going to want to bring in my paper piercing mat, okay? to do my stamping to get my best image. And I am going to stamp it in early espresso as well. So it kind of matches the, the poles here. Because I'm sure that's what you do when you're actually stringing lights, not. You just are lucky to get them up, aren't you? But this is idyllic, right? This is our little stamp in tree village. Okay, so when you have a long, thin photopolymer stamp like this, it can get bent out of shape really easily. That may not be what you want, especially if you're gonna try and cut it out with a die that is made to fit the shape of the stamp as designed. So, you wanna lay this face down, okay? And then put your block on top of it. Don't do it this way. Don't put your stamp on the block because I can tell you right now that it's not right. And I've, I've like pushed it out of shape a little bit. Even when you're careful, you do. And then the die cut won't work. Okay, and then it seems like the die cut's broken. The die cut's not broken. You just have to put this down and let it just go to its normal shape and then put the block on top. Okay, and then let's bring in a little early espresso. Good stuff. Jean says hers is, these are your least favorites, blushing bride or petal pink. Oh, see, I like petal pink. Blushing bride's probably number 49, Jean. <laughs> Where is this conversation going? I try and keep it so positive, but you know, these are little secrets that I'm not afraid to tell you because they're so infrequent that there might be something that I don't care for, but just telling you. You don't see me use a lot of brush and bride, and you don't see me use a lot of garden green. Thank goodness I have so many other things to choose from. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Yes, always a good reminder about those photopolymer stamps. Okay, looking good, and it's so cute. I want to give it a nice warm glow. We don't have a crushed curry blend, but I'll tell you what. A dark Daffodil Delight really looks very much like a crushed curry. And that's what I thought would be a good color for this. So I love the random drawing of the lights. And um, it looks like a real set of lights. Now I should have left one of them blank. Actually, that would look like a real set of lights, wouldn't it? There's always one out and it's in a very, it's usually in a very noticeable place. But, oh, and we also need our sentiment. So very merry. So let's use the block for that. It's the same long little block. I love the stamp set. I mean, there's so many little different things. It feels like you can create a scene very easily, and that's difficult for me. I feel like scene cards are difficult for me, but not with the set. It just kind of makes itself. Okay, a little soft succulent. How about that? I could have stamped it in garden green, but let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. I might run out of garden green ink. Now that would be crazy. That's for sure. Not gonna happen. Wouldn't be prudent. Okay. So there's a that. And that is all of the stamping that I had left to do. Now, a little die cutting, right? Now, hopefully, like magic, this really wacky die cut will fit right on our lights. 
See, look at that. Isn't that a cute die cut? There's really no way you could do it wrong. Well, no, there is what I just told you um, with the stamp. But otherwise, it's good to go. Now, here's our um, stars. You get three at once, which is why I don't know where the other one went. And what else was I missing? Oh, I was missing a tree. Let me see. I was missing a detailed soft succulent tree. Okay. One minute here. One minute, my friends. Just going to use some scraps for this because it really doesn't take much at all. In fact, whatever scrap I use for crushed curry will still be too big. So let's see here. We've got a little thing of crushed curry, which is perfect. And then let me grab some soft succulent. Where are you, soft succulent? Oh, don't tell me I have to cut some. That'll just be silly. Come on now. Oh, brother. That's always the way, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. I have some soft succulents sitting around here. I thought. Here we go. Okay. We don't need much of it, though. But I do want to put a little bit of adhesive sheet on it. And I have some offsets down here. And that's perfect for one of the trees. So all I'm going to do is, again, I want the medium, I want the medium tree right here that is the top layer. So this is definitely going to be enough. So the hardest part is just going to be peeling this off because it's, it doesn't have a seam. <laughs> I, Elizabeth, they are so cute. <laughs> Stop it, Andrea. You cannot do it wrong. Because you just watched the part. You just watched me show you how to not do it wrong. <laughs> you could even show that to your daycare kids. And then they wouldn't do it wrong either. Can you believe that? Okay, so we're going to just put this little piece right there. Okay, and then I'm going to run this through the die cutter this with the stars and this with the string of lights and we are going to have magic ah, magic not really magic stampin up magic but that's it okay all right one moment please it's gonna go through you could run all of these through the mini but of course i'm gonna run it through the large die cut machine all at once so that you don't have to stand by and wait and you might want to use a little washi on this light this string of lights it's awfully long and spindly I'm gonna use a little purple tape it's basically the same thing as a little washi just because I don't want to have to redo it right that's not so fun I think I got it. I think she's got it by George. Okay. Perfect. A couple passes there. So uh, I am sure that everyone was really exhausted on Monday, as was the rest of the American world at least. Um, but you know what the cool thing is? Is it's Thursday night already. So cool. How'd that happen? Well, we slept through Monday. <laughs> I, yeah. I stayed, the fun thing though was on the 4th. So I knew I had to stay up a little bit with cash. So I didn't even bother trying to go to bed. I stayed up and I worked on a card that I'm really heavily in like with but I can't show it to you. What? Not right now anyway, because it's going to be for a hop. That's going to be on Instagram. Can you believe it? Yeah. I actually do have a page already on Instagram, 
Um, and it is, I don't put a lot of, act, what do I want to say? It has activity, but it doesn't have a ton of activity. Um, I don't, I don't, um, go out there and sell stuff very often, I guess just because of time, but I sure like looking at Instagram. And so I, my friends, was invited to do an Insta hop with all sorts of really cool Stampin' Up! people. I'm so excited. And, um, oh goodness, now I need a card base. What happened there? So, um, anyway, I'm super excited about that. And that's going to go live, I think, on the 10th. So, please keep your eyes out. I'll post something on Facebook. But, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. And, of course, I hope you like my card, but... I've seen a couple of the others too, and they're all really fun and very different. So I hope you like that. Okay, it looks like my screen is being weird. Um, I will change that in just a minute. I don't know why it's doing that. It's giving you all sorts of like different looks. One moment here, let me cut my paper, and then I will get that off of there for you. What? Just when you think you understand this stuff, it was fine for a minute, and then it wasn't. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back here. One, two, three. Ooh. Two. Let's just bring that back. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay. Let's see if that works. I know. It wants to make sure you don't miss anything. Anything. <laughs> How about putting it on the screen five times? I don't know why it does that. It's so silly. Okay. So, card time. See, we just have to kind of assemble now. Sorry. I know you're looking at the black screen. It's coming back. There we go. It's like that's what I had before. Come on. Okay. So, um, I cut our mat just an eighth of an inch larger, so not a lot. Um, usually I use quarter of an inch measurements. Now the other side of this paper, I will say, has these really cool, um, three by three inch squares of circles and, well, three by three inch sections of circles and squares, and you could just literally cut that out, stamp a sentiment on it, boom, you're done. Maybe an embellishment. But, um, of course, we're using the other side tonight. The bokeh. So, the Lights of Glow is in a suite that's probably called Lights of Glow. But it's on the cover of the catalog. So, I know, Kathy, something crazy was going on with my screen. <laughs> yes, Susan, it's so fun. The Insta Hop. Um, like I said, I'll definitely put a link over here on Facebook and let you know when it goes live, but you know, it gets us out and about in a new neighborhood, so to speak. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. You will love it because I'm loving it already. And I haven't even seen everybody's creations. Okay. So we have no ribbon or anything going around because we are setting the scene, right? And so already we just have a beautiful little um, nicely matted piece of DSP. And then, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Pressure, I'm gonna stamp directly on the DSP. When it's serious, you notice I kind of talk in a whisper. <laughs> we can do it. We can do this thing. Okay, so now we're going to bring in the stamps, right? Beautiful stamps. Oh, my goodness. How is it 8.03? That's just not even possible. And I am going to do... Let's do the large one first. And let's block up the small one. And then we'll block up the other ones. Oh, goodness. Look, there's my star. Things. Okay, so 
again, I need um, the paper piercing mat. I'll just put it under, under this grid paper. And then let's get our soft succulent out. Now I feel pretty comfortable with stamping first generation directly onto the soft succulent. But if you don't, of course, go to your grid paper first. Okay, and then I already kind of know where things are gonna be. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just gonna take the second generation right up to somewhere else. You can barely see it, but you can see it. So just know that it's still there. Now I'm gonna do the evening evergreen, no, shaded spruce, I'm sorry. Shaded spruce. And whoops, let me do the, let me do the medium. Yeah, I don't want too many of the large ones in the background. So let me do the medium. And this one, I do want to stamp off because it's very dark. You knew that though. And then I'm just gonna kind of put it in the background, right? It's gonna look like it's going back not like it's standing on top of others. <laughs> and then I'm gonna bring in the medium, uh, is this one the medium or the small? Nope, the medium detailed stamp. I just needed to put all these on here. And I'm gonna bring it in with first generation soft succulent. Okay, and so the way this works, it's a little shiny, so I need to bring it towards me. So I do apologize, but it's just clear stamping right on stamps, right? So that's fun. So you can see a little bit of differentiation and detail there. And so you're just going to kind of work these in and do a little bit of each. I may as well put them all on the block. Yeah. I think so. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, so again, I am gonna bring a little one clear out here and then bring my tiny. You just have to keep track of which colors you're using. Okay, and they don't, like I can't even really see that because of the glare of my light, but it's okay. Because as long as you're landing somewhere near it, it's fine. <laughs> it's not 8.03, it's 10.03. Stop it. You East Coasters, you could just like, you need to take a nap. Like when it's, um, when it's your six o'clock, you need to be laying down on Thursdays. I'm telling you right now, that is how you succeed. <laughs> because, you know, they don't let me stop work at like two o'clock. <laughs> This color is very intense. You know that. I'm trying to make sure I'm not wearing it. No guarantees on that. Okay, move this one. What the heck? Oh, it's on the other side. I think. There we go. Okay. That noise makes my teeth hurt. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's have another little one. And let's put him or her. In second generation. Really? Oh, I can't even really even see it. Let's try that again. Pretty light, but that's okay. It all kind of adds up and makes a difference. Okay, now this one was shaded spruce. So this one's going to be soft succulent and so on. Just have fun with it. Um, Let's see, let's do this one. I don't even know if it'll show up. Oh, it did, okay, there you go. And I think that's good. We're gonna have so much in front of this. You just wanted a little bit of something in the background. Okay, so then comes the fun part. <laughs> it's all fun. But we just like glue these things or um, the trees are going to be, they're self-adhesive um, on the top layer. And so I didn't add a lot of layering to this in terms of dimensionals. 
The only thing I put up on dimensionals is the trees for sale sign because um, it's just a lot, you know, it's gonna make your card front really thick. So here's what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna bring the lights in, okay? I know I'm gonna like dry fit the post. You'll know after you do this a few times. But I'm gonna kinda dry fit the post and then I really just wanna know where the lights are first because if you put your posts, it, it tells you where to put your posts so that your lights aren't hanging out there in outer space by themselves. Right? This is going to tell you the distance between the posts without measuring it because we don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the lights part because I think the post is going to end up holding the lights down. And let's see, I've already kind of made it so I know it goes almost at the top. Okay where it should be, and then kind of centering it over the trees we did. Um, you can fill in your scene with your with your die cut trees after everything gets done. Now this, I didn't put it on adhesive because I was only cutting out two, but um, you can. And the post topper probably needs a tiny bit of glue. And yeah, I could be using my tweezers but how would I get messy? Ooh, yeah, right. Now the star won't leave me alone. Or the star, I couldn't find it. And now it won't leave me alone. Okay, I'm gonna get those tweezers out because they are essential and they were in the essentials kit. Um, it's in the Rustic Harvest Suite in your mini catalog and it is essential. It's the embossing essentials kit. I believe it's $27 US. And it has these reverse tweezers with um, ceramic tongs on the end of it. And then it has an embossing tray that everybody always wanted for years and years. And it has an embossing buddy. So, oh, and a brush, a paintbrush. So there you go. I don't know which do I like best. I really kind of think I appreciate the tweezers the most because my other contraband reverse tweezers were getting really old and I was just on the cusp of buying some new ones and then Stampin' Up! Good job Stampin' Up! came out with something. Now normally what I do is I go and buy something and then Stampin' Up! came out with it. <laughs> you go, wait a minute. Okay, so these are just stickers. We've made these into stickers, right? And so I'm kind of looking around, like, where do I want this? I think this one's gonna be here. And then its mate is this large piece. And I do, I, I, when there's stickers like this, I don't worry about all the die cuts in the middle because lots of times they'll come out if you just pull the paper. And then these just cinch right up on this. Oh my gosh, couldn't be easier and couldn't be pretty. Look at that, so nice. Okay, and then the other guys. Um, oh, that one's not a sticker. Did I just cut that out? I think I may have. So I'm gonna put that one up here because it's gonna be kind of up above the trees for sale sign. And then I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot of these. This is the one I just cut out, so. Let's see if we can get a lot of those negative pieces out by pulling the sticker. Oh yes, sometimes it works. Then you have a couple sometimes and they're a little more difficult because they're sticky, right? But that's okay. All right, and then finally, we're gonna have this little fat tree kind of beside the trees for sale sign. So see, it doesn't really matter about all of your stamping in the background. That's really more to just make it look like it's not just hovering in space, in Boca space, right? And you know, you can get this, this a very similar look to this Boca background by using your white P 
pigment ink and stamping uh, sponge daubers. Okay, it's just a really cool technique. You can look it up, Boca Technique Sponge Daubers. We can do it sometime, but I'm not promising when. There's so much on the agenda, so little time. But I like doing it, it's fun. I'll tell you who's really good at it, Jen Houston. Okay, so now we have just a couple there, a couple of regular Stampin' Dimensionals. And then, just because I overkill the Dimensionals part, I'm gonna put a little one right there. So if I put that in the mail, or if I put it in this box behind me for like six months, um, it's gonna get crushed. Well, hello, Emery. How are you? Jill, it is so stinking cute, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's a little mini scene. What's not to love? Trees for sale. Oh, so cute. Mine don't have snow on them right now. Um, lots of times the trees in the tree lots don't have snow on them. But you could certainly put snow on them. And how would you do that? You could cut the detail part in white or shimmer white. You could use our puff paint and heat it up with the heating tool. You could use, um, I guess you could use a blending brush with the craft white ink, but that sounds really messy. You could use embossing powder. So there's lots of different ways to put all of that kind of stuff together. Okay, and then finally, this thing ran off as usual. Take your pick tool. Watch her nail color, yes. My nail color is currently sweet sorbet, is it not? Hmm, I wonder if that has anything to do with our in color kit. I don't know. It's month three, so we still have three more choices. But Jean, your kit's going out in the morning. What if I tricked you and it's like one of the other colors? That'll be so funny. <laughs> okay, I don't know if it'll be so funny, but it'd be kind of funny. Now you probably can't see this as well, but even the stars have little embossing. They have like five embossing detail lines on them. So I'm putting them on the putty end of my take your pick tool, and then I'm just dotting the glue on it, okay? Just dotting. And let's see. Let's do this one. I liked to do one of the back ones. I mean, one of the stamped ones. And then two of the die cuts. There's no rhyme or reason to that, though. You can put a star on every single one of them if you want. It's so strange in your mind to be making cards for Christmas when it's like 95 degrees outside. It's so funny in the air conditioning. Air conditioning is mimic mimicking the cold, right? Okay, there is our super cute trees for sale. It doesn't have an inside though. Hey, Key. We stamped one. Where'd that run off to? I don't know. We'll find it in a minute. But that is our first card. Oh my gosh. Is it so fun? I love it. I hope you do too. Okay. Now this one is card number two. I do have all the pieces. Yeah, we can do this thing. And then we may have to save the other one for like a pop-up live because I want definitely want to do it because it's fun like I said um, but you know it takes a little time too and I have all the pieces cut already so maybe we'll have a little weekend pop in but let's do this one because it has some cool techniques to it that um, I want to show you because they're fun so let's assemble our trees first because we already know how those go together right now again these colors are garden green what and granny apple green seriously seriously I used garden green broke it out I didn't have to unwrap the pack of cardstock it's not that bad but um, it's been waiting to get into the rotation for a while I'm sure it was excited <laughs> it's like I think she's gonna make a mistake and choose me and I did 
because sometimes it's in our designer series paper and then that's what tells me like, oh right, you do like it sometimes. Okay. There has to be at least one color that I don't fancy. My goodness, I need some way of like narrowing this whole thing down. <laughs> what? Okay, is this the fat one? Yes. Ooh, fat one. Now, okay, I knew you were going to call that a caravan, Leslie. Mm-hmm. I think that's super cute. Do you go camping or glamping or anything? I do not do that now on purpose. However, partly it's because, like, when I was a kid to teenager, um, until I decided I wanted to stay home by myself, um, that is what our family did. We camped. We didn't get on an airplane. We didn't stay in a hotel. We got in the pickup and went camping. And um, so when I was pretty young, my mom and stepdad did buy a camper that looked, it looked like this. And um, except the inside was trashed, but they worked on it and like recovered the upholstery. And my mom made curtains and all that business. It was super cute, of course, right? So um, then we went in that. But lots of times I still wanted to sleep outside. I say that now and I'm like, I'm laughing because I'm like thinking about getting up off of the ground. Oh, I don't think that would be very relaxing. I might get down there just fine. It's to be the getting back up after sleeping there for all night. Okay, so a couple of things about this. We're gonna change the color of the camper just slightly. We're going to use silver on the camper um, details. And we're going to cut the camper out of Tahitian Tide. Won't that be cute? And then I think we're going to make the curtains out of Sweet Sorbet. We don't call it a caravan. We call it a camper. Or a camp trailer. Um, yeah, that's what we call it. Isn't that weird? Same thing. Like, if I called this a caravan, that is just different enough that lots of people wouldn't know what I was talking about. It'd be fun. I'm, I'll try it next time. Um, but yeah, that's what we call it. We're strange that way. A pull along. What? Is that what you call it? See, we even have different things we call it in different areas of the country, Megan, apparently. It's called a pull along? Really? Oh, okay. I guess I'd call this a trailer. And then what, what's the thing that'd be like in the pickup? in the bed of the pickup, would that be a camper? I don't know, it's been too long. Okay, let me just die cut. You guys can, you guys can throw out all the verbiage of what this stuff is. So I'm gonna cut this and let me actually bring the die cutter over here so you can see what these little pieces are, okay? It's gonna be close to, uh, let me use the mini. Never fear. I got you, girls. Now, I want to do something on the mini because I need to give a tip to one of my newest stampers, very nice person named Joanna. So, Joanna, you better be watching this. <laughs> I'm going to test you. Okay, this is a sandwich that I and most people like to use for the mini cut and emboss machine. This is not what your instructions say, but if you will follow me, I promise you, the die cuts go through so much smoother, okay? A fifth wheel, that's right. Okay, so use the number three plate, okay? And then put one of your number two, uh, we call this like the sandwich, right? Your clear plate, okay. And then put your cardstock, then your die, and then another number two plate on top. Now, that does differ from what the instructions say. So, I'm just giving you a heads up. However, look at that. It rolls through so smoothly. Um, there's a number one plate that the instructions say to use in place of the three. 
it must just be a tiny hair thicker because it kind of kind of gives you trouble. So use the three plate when you're doing regular die cutting, okay? Don't throw away the one plate because you need it when you are embossing, when you're dry embossing. But, and if you're hearing like creaks and cracks and stuff when you're rolling your die cutting through, you're doing it right. That's what happens, especially when you're using brand new, die, uh, brand new plates. Um, yeah, the dies cut into them and that's on purpose. That's what they do. That's why you're not supposed to cut directly into these kind of plates because they're not meant to be replaced. Just the clear plates are meant to be replaced. Okay, so now this thing looks odd. Yes, it's actually two different pieces just put onto one die. So it's not so tiny. And that is what really helps us we're just gonna put it on this little piece of silver that I have cut and then roll it through, whoops. Unless it tries to go walk about on me. Okay, this is the caravan top, Megan. And the caravan detail on the side. Cause this is a fancy caravan. Okay, now see that? Now once you can see it cut, then you go, oh, all right, that makes sense. So it's two separate pieces just on one die. And that is gonna go on the top. Oh my gosh, I love this color combo. And on the bottom. There's embossing on the Tahitian Tide piece that shows you exactly where to put these things. So don't even worry about it. Now I'm going to make red curtains and they're so small. You won't, I'm going to make red curtains and I'm going to make a red um, bow for the wreath, for the world's tiniest wreath. Don't lose this die. Look at that. Don't lose it. Don't have some rosé and then plan on finding that again because it's not going to happen. And then this too, it's not much bigger. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's a good thing I have magnetic plates. My magnetic plates get a little scratched up because I can't pick those things up off of there because of my nails. So um, that's why they look like that, but they still work, thank goodness. <gasps> I went down in my drawer. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, it is so cute. You can't help it, it's so tiny. Okay, while I'm doing this die cutting, I want to say a special shout out to my YouTubers. Like, what the heck? You guys came out in droves. Okay, a couple of things that I'm really like, was so happy to see. Um, I, my last video, that was about the paper pumpkin alternates has over 1100 views get out of town so cool and um we are getting really close to 500 subscribers which is fantastic so i appreciate you so much so if you're watching me over on youtube hello and thank you and um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost you anything. And it helps the Stamping Zoo so much. So you just hit that subscribe bell. And then if you want to be reminded of upcoming videos, make sure that you hit the all. I think the button's all. Okay, quick um, step back to the die cutting machine. We are just cutting out the two windows out of uh, So Saffron, okay? because we want to make it look like there's a little uh, candle light, propane light, whatever kind of electricity um, replacement you're using in your caravan, pull along, whatever. We are gonna use that. And then finally, we need a wreath. And I had a wreath in that envelope. Let's see if I can put this down here without getting too crazy. 
And let me try to bring this back in so we can assemble said scene. Okay, here's the envelope. Will we find the wreath? Yes. Okay, there it is. Now, if I don't lose it between now and then, it's a distinct possibility. But, um, okay. So anyway, yes, YouTube, shout out to you guys. Awesome. I love it. I know you're watching in the middle of the night too, and it does not seem weird to me at all because guess what I do sometimes when I can't sleep? Turn the old YouTube on. <laughs> okay, so this is um, a couple of different pieces make the scene in the back, and one is the starry night. Let's just make this really quickly. Deborah's gonna leave us. Okay, we'll catch you on replay. I know I'm late, but we're gonna finish this card because it's gonna be pretty easy, really. Oh, look. Okay, so there's our card base. This is Starry Sky. So we're already starting, starting out with the color that we want to make a beautiful little night scene. Okay, so this is the inside of the card. And this is going to be our snow drift. Let's see. This is a super fun technique for making this sky. So I need... A blending brush and I need starry sky and then I also need believe it or not I need the whisper white reinker I know like beware and it's best if you have oh brother it's best if you have a paper pumpkin box to do this in of course I don't have that at hand so we're gonna go a little dangerous tonight. Okay, so you, if you are making this card like from start to finish, you may wanna start with making this first because it needs a little bit of time to dry because it has um, Whisper White Craft Pigment Ink on it, okay? So first you want to just ink up your beautiful starry sky. Oh, look at that just by itself. It's so gorgeous. I'm telling you, you're going to want to have it. If you're not in my in color club, you better just get yourself the starry sky products. So if you are new to Stampin' Up or for some reason you don't know this, let me tell you something really cool. Stampin' Up's products, uh, one of the foundations of them being successful is that we have a lot of coordination, color coordination. So we have ribbon in Starry Sky. We have embellishments in Starry Sky, inks, markers, all sorts of stuff. And so that is just part of the fun and that's part of the genius of Stampin' Up! It makes it so easy, is that these things just kind of coordinate, go together real easy. And once you know what Starry Sky looks like, you know what it's going to look like as an embellishment. You know what it's going to look like as a marker, things like that. So what I've done here is I just brought in a little bit of Starry Sky ink directly onto, uh, let me make sure, is this Orchid Oasis paper? Okay, so I did have a little bit of um, differing color but they're very close in color, and I like how the Starry Sky almost kind of um, glows up through that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with this is crazy. Um, no, this stuff is just dangerous, right? It gets all over stuff sometimes, and it's it takes a long time to dry, or it takes longer, than, because it's not a water-based ink, it's a pigment ink. So, a little bit of difference there, but, um, you need it because it's just really useful for things like this. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do with it. I'm going to take one of our spritzers that has a little bit of water. You could do this in a couple different ways, but I'm gonna be really careful, maybe, and put a couple of spritzes of water, not a lot. Then I'm gonna take a contraband water painter that doesn't have much water in it at all. Really, it can be dry. I'm taking a contraband because I am using the craft white and I don't want to mess up one of my other water painters. <laughs> so 
So I'm gonna, this is the texture I wanted. I don't know, it's not like as thin as water, but um, it's thinner than its normal state. Okay, now, let's see. Now I'm gonna splatter this, which is why I'm trying to move stuff, right? It's one way to get my desk clean. That's why it's best if you do it in a paper pumpkin box, an empty paper pumpkin box. But you know what? We're gonna live dangerously. Oh, speaking of dangerously, no, no friends, that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, this is, <laughs> Tint. guess what? <laughs> We're starting over, my gosh in the world I should have done that not over the cardstock huh too funny <laughs> if you can't sleep you read good job Jean sometimes um, sometimes that backfires on me then I get involved in my book right you know what I um, we've talked about this but I guess you'll be interested to know maybe some of you that I still use the calm app so I've used it over a year now. I know that because I just paid for it. Um, paid for my renewal. But I, I kind of use that. And there's these things on there called sleep stories. And what it's, it's what I use the most out of the whole app. There's a million different things. Meditations and all sorts of stuff. But time and again, I come back to um, the sleep stories. And yeah, they help. Okay, now let's take a look at this thing. Okay, there's a little bit of ink in this, or water in this barrel. I am gonna get that out of there. I don't want any extra water going on with this thing. Oh, because I, I want it to control the thickness of it. So it's a water painter, but I'm not using it like it's, like you normally would. Okay, let's try that again now. Okay. So you just kind of load up the bottom of the brush and then this you can tap on your finger. That doesn't work with, or I don't find that it works with the Stampin' Blends because the ink is thicker than this, right? Oh, this is pretty. I'm going to leave it just, just like that. There's a tiny spot of water which will make its own technique. Sorry, I'm trying to grab a Kleenex. Okay, this will leave its own technique, but I am going to, in the interest of time, I'm gonna kinda dab that up. That's really pretty. Now, what I normally do is I take a wet wipe, clean this off the block immediately, not over my paper, right? I've learned that lesson before. It is starry, scary, starry, starry night. I almost said scary night. No, not scary. It's what it looks like when you're camping, right? Because you don't have you don't have all the light pollution. Yes. So now I know somebody's gonna ask me to splatter the Milky Way. I am not that talented. <laughs> but that works. Finally, just again, in the interest of time. I am going to bring in the heat tool. I'm going to heat this up a little bit because I want to dry it a little bit quicker than, like I said, the, what you want to do sometimes is do this piece first and then let it dry. But I didn't, I didn't have that much room. Now, unlike embossing, I'm not going to get right up on the paper. I don't want to move that ink. I want it to stay dots, like stars, right? And if I get too close to it before it starts to dry, I could move it. This is where that water spot was. Remember you sent me saying that you can make your own technique just with water like that. So that's pretty fun too. So just a little bit, I'm not gonna warp it. It probably doesn't even need to be the highest heat and it might not be like I'm not going to take my hand and swipe it across this but I think I can set the images and we'll be fine okay 
And then this is the inside. This is our snowdrift. I realize you don't think it looks like a snowdrift, but it will. And it's random, okay? It's just random, but I feel like I want the camper up on a little hill. And kind of just looking at where, that's a pretty big hill. I don't know that you'd put a camper up on a hill anyway, right? If I recall, that's not the smartest thing to do. But this is art. This is artiste. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm gonna give this kind of a furry, snowy edge. You can also do this with, I have a distressing tool, a Tim Holtz distressing tool, but sometimes it's just a little easier to grab the paper snips and you can work, you can figure out which way the paper the fibers kind of rip up more than another way. I don't know how to explain that, but you can figure out how to distress the fibers a little bit easier. It seems like when I work backwards on it like this, pull it towards me, it seems to be roughing up quite a bit. Now, I kind of like that. I like it this way though. That's not the way I cut that, but it's okay. I cut it a little bit. Um, normally I would cut this paper a little bit longer, but for some reason I thought it was fine to do that. Here's what I'm gonna do. I, I kind of know, where did everything go that I die cut? Is it under this? No. Oh, here's my trailer. Okay, so I kind of know like, where I want stuff, right? I want a lot of sky because it's just, that's what it looks like when you're camping. It looks like the sky is just like right in your face. Okay, so how about if we put the trailer like this, then this can move up even a little bit more, I think, and still have a lot of room for the trees and the sky. Okay, so at this point, I'm really just gonna do like a little mark. Of course you can use a pencil too. I'm going to use a mark that I can see and then I'm going to remember which way this thing is facing and I'm going to glue it. But I'm not going to bring glue clear down to the bottom because I've cut this longer than I know we need it because I wanted to be able to move it around. Okay. I can see my marks. Just little rough marks I've made. Okay. And then, and again, it doesn't matter if it's even because it's a snow drift, right? We have it like we want it. And then this is all rough, I'm trying to make it look like a little powder. So I did get some glue on the back here where my scissors are going to go, but my scissors can be cleaned with some rubbing alcohol or um, hand sanitizer gets that off too, probably because of the alcohol. Okay. And that's, we have dies that have slopes on them. You can use that, but if you wanna just cut one, that works too, okay? Now, I wanna take a tiny bit of, we can use grid paper. I just wanna take this corner, well, no, let's see. Let me cut a strip of it. I wanna cut a strip off my grid paper. Here's why. So I'm gonna start building this trailer, but this trailer has no windows in it. I mean, it has no background for windows, right? So I'm gonna take this scrap of grid paper that I just cut off. I'm gonna lay it on my silicone mat and I'm gonna lay it just so I can see the windows. It's just kind of a weird thing I stumbled on. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring those So Saffron window pieces in. Lord help me. I'm gonna bring them in. I swear I will find them. They're right over here somewhere. Let me move a few pieces. Here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna bring these in and I'm going to adhere them. And the reason I've got that grid paper back there is so 
they have something to adhere to. Otherwise, it's just going to be you trying to fit them onto your card. And I actually have this up on dimensionals because, you know, it's a trailer. So I just found this was easier. And then we're going to trim away the excess. Okay, because the only thing that's going to be glued is the windows. So it's going to be really easy to trim it away. And then that looks like your inside playing games, doesn't it? It's so adorable. And then we better put a wreath on this door. You're staying. Oh, okay, good, KZ. I thought you were leaving because, you know, you're in Florida. But, um, and you can use the white velveteen paper. Yes, I did not have any, if you can believe that. I also did not have any white glimmer paper, which I was looking for earlier today. Both of those things will be remedied with an order that I place uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. So again, that was a little piece that was on, um, on the adhesive sheet. Look at that. They were MFEO made for each other. And then this is that bow. Let's see if I can get a tiny bit. I do need a tiny bit of glue. Man, I'm like a surgeon tonight, I tell you. Don't speak too soon. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. When you make this, you are going to utter those words a lot. Trust me. You can't help it. Now, be careful with the glue and the foil, okay? Normally, I say to use glue dots with the foil. There's a line right here that gets embossed on the camper. It shows you exactly where to put this. Dang it. You're so cute. And then this thing is the bottom decoration, I don't know, trim. Again, just a touch. I don't even bother putting any right there. You don't need it. It's gonna stay in place. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for you, Leslie. Oh my gosh, as long as the floods allow, Lord. I saw some of that situation on there. Oops, I can't put that on yet. You know why? Because I need a black tire. And there's a little piece of black. So I need to cut another little piece of the trailer, just like I did with the windows. But I just need, again, I just need the tire. So I'm gonna do this right over here off camera and then bring it back and show you that I trim it out. Kinda like the windows. You're just piecing it in there and it's super easy. Uh, where's my top plate? Here we go. Okay. So then you're just going to have like a piece of the trailer again. And so take your snips and don't cut it off like flat because you need a place to glue it, okay? So give it like a little tab, like this. It needs to be lower, I guess a little bit lower. You don't want it to come up over the foil. And then I just put a little glue directly onto the tire. And then this, I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it. It's so small, but it's actually embossed as well. So it looks like a tire with a wheel on it. And so then put this in there. Okay, and then we can put this on. Okay, oof. I almost made a tire with no wheel. Embarrassing. You've seen them though on the streets, right? Tires with no, I mean campers with no wheels. Yeah. Okay, now this again, it just fits um, the embossing shows you where to fit it. So 
so there's really no guesswork. Oh, get out! I don't know which one I like better. Do I like the raspberry one or do I like the teal one? Okay, so now to finish this thing off, bring your snips back in and then remember what I told you? All this is dry, so you can just, oh, don't cut so far that you cut the window out. <laughs> Just trim around it and kind of angle your scissors in. See, like this. So that it looks like that. And then really, all you need to do is put some dimensionals on it strategically so that you are on the grid paper and on the cardstock. And then that will hold it in. Or you can glue it all down, whatever you want. You can put a piece of tape over it. I'm gonna put this one right down in the wheel Look at that. And I'm gonna do one here and one here. Oh, I better put one more in the middle. What about this piece though? Did I put anything back there? No. Guess with six or seven dimensionals on the body, it's okay. It's okay to look more than than I, silly. What? I'm coming in on the end of a story, aren't I? It is such a cool set, Corinne. So again, these dies are free, free. I'm not kidding, they're free. With a $100 purchase of any other product. It doesn't have to be the stamp set that coordinates. It doesn't have to be out of the mini catalog. It can be out of the clearance rack. If you find $100 in products that you like, you purchase them. And then you can purchase this and get it for free. It is like there should be a trick, but there's no trick because it's stamping up and they don't really trick us. Oh man. Okay. Um, oh, to like more than one. Yes, it is okay to like more than one. You can. So funny. I was like, you know, girl, sometimes I'm just in my own. Well, I mean, I'm a little busy here, but I still like to feel like I'm part of the conversation. So I end up really sounding like, I don't know what's going on because I don't. Okay, so let's put this kind of back behind it a little bit. Like we're just nestled up there by a big, beautiful ponderosa pine. Just cool it. Did you see that was almost gonna jump off? It's getting ahead of itself. See, and you end up seeing very little of the drift, which is kind of sad, but really not, because it's all making up part of this very convincing scene, I might say. And then I'm gonna put some more dimensionals on this little front tree. I don't know why, but I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't have waited until everything was put together to put my sentiment on it. I don't know. Am I brave enough? I kind of forgot. <laughs> Where's the puppy? The puppy's on the third card, which I'm not going to make tonight. So sorry. But trust me, I have already used that dog a lot and I plan on using him even more. Okay. That's so cute. Ended up looking kind of flat because I put my tree back here, but I still really like it. And it has a tree on the inside, okay, which we don't need to stamp right now. Um, hmm. Let's do it. Let's stamp our greeting on there. Oh my gosh, we're about to see something go down. Um, I like Season's Greetings. I don't know, it's just kind of cute on this one. Oh, where did that come from? Oh, you guys, that's from another stamp set. Um, it's from a stamp set that's carrying over from last year. I was like, where did that come from? Because I felt like I was using Christmas greetings a lot. So we're gonna use Christmas greetings and we're gonna use it in Tahitian Tide. Yes! We gotta set ourselves up for success here. Success! See, what time is it? 8.54, get out. I knew these were gonna take time, but you know what? You guys can handle it. I can do it. I take a nap <laughs> and a shower, which I really think helps. 
So this beautiful Tahitian Tide. Let's take a look. Oh, it's so pretty. You can't help but love it. I don't know, girl. How's it going to go? This is scary. Even pressure. Use your paper piercing mat. Make sure you're not on the edge of it. Make sure you're kind of down in the corner here. And yes, yes, all right. That feels good, doesn't it? You know it does. When you stamp after your cards all together and then it like comes together. All right, finally, card base, nurse card base. Okay, and one final little tricky poo, which I'm really starting to rely on is we take our, so this um, piece of, this is not like a cut down mat. This piece of Orchid Oasis is the same um, dimension or the same measurements as the front of the card. So in order to get it exactly where I want it, I'm gonna put this card base, I gotta make sure it's the right way. I'm gonna put it into the corner of the, um, Stamparatus, where the bind, what are those called? Where the spines meet. So you have like a raised edge. And then we're gonna get the back painted here with our liquid glue or whatever you wanna use. And then you put this up in the corner and then you put this up in the corner and guess what? They match up because there's nowhere else for it to go. Oh my. Lord, I am probably going to have to wake up in the middle of the night and come in here and look at this card. Now, a couple of things. This is an adhesive remover. I sell it in my adhesive essentials kits. So if you have ordered one of those, you have one. This is what it does. There's a tiny bit of shiny glue right up here. See that? If you just gingerly don't like come at it like a wrecking ball, right? If you just work on this a little bit, you will take that adhesive off. And like I said, just be gentle with it because you don't want to mess up all that beautiful um, starry sky that you just did. In a pinch, you can also use the sand eraser, but I wouldn't use the sand eraser with all that pigment ink around it because I'm afraid I would just sand it right off. Okay. Oh my gosh, so cute. I love the cards we made tonight. I love that you were here with me and I um, hope that you enjoyed it and picked up a few new tips and tricks. And now when you um, place an order for me that is $100 in product, you can get these tree lot dies and you know exactly what to do with it, right? You know exactly how to get started because I've just given you two ideas and um, many more to come. Oh my gosh, are they not so cute? Let me put those there for a minute and let me grab again the products we were using is the Trees for Sale photopolymer stamp set. Beautiful on its own. You don't have to have the dies. But if you get the dies, I think it's only going to like amp up all of the fun you have with this. I'm making sure I have all the dies. I don't even know if I have all of them. There's 24. We didn't even use, we didn't use the pennant. Okay, I didn't even put curtains in this one. Doll, we have time for all that. But um, you don't have to, is the point. So anyway, and then we didn't even use the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, so we did a lot. But we didn't use the dog, like Megan said. So the dog, Megan, is in this card. And, um, so like I said, I'll have a, we'll, I'll pop on sometime this weekend probably, and we'll make this card because I think it has lots of good texture and, um, it has some sequence for everything on it. It has some clear embossing, some staples. I mean, you know, it has a crumpled up snowflake. <laughs> so anyway, if you have enjoyed this and you like these products, Please let me know if you'd like to place an order. I love Stampin' Up! products so much. Um, and I 
am here to help you love them too. I can help you with any budget, any interests, any gift giving you'd like to do. I love helping people with specific um, problem solving that they have to so whether this is a hobby that you've been enjoying all of your life or a hobby that you're new to uh if you live in the united states uh send me a message and let's chat about what you might like to to start with okay thank you so much everyone i am an independent stampin up demonstrator i do sell all of the products i've used tonight and probably a thousand ish more <laughs> if you've liked this video the compliment you can give me is to share it onto your website. I will be giving away something um, from my treasure chest stash for everyone who has shared this video. Next week we'll be put into a drawing, okay? Shortly after this video ends, I will draw, um, I'll come back on live in five or 10 minutes and I will draw for the hippo, hippest hippos stamp set. And, um, so anyway, I just appreciate you so much. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon, okay? Thank you so much, everybody. Whoops, I forgot where my button was. Okay, I'm really leaving now. <laughs>